Hi everybody, welcome back to the series where we are designing this one page website from scratch with the help of a Figma design. So this is our progress as of now. We have designed the header section and uh, we have designed the our client section, the about us section and the our project section. Now let's go to our Figma file and see which is the next section we need to design. So the next section is the testimonial section. So let's get started. <laughs> Now there's a difference between this section and the other sections. The difference is that the width of this section is 100% unlike the other sections. So here we can see that the width of the our project section is uh, just the width of the wrapper division. But in the testimonial section we can see that we have the background color which stretches all the way to the edges of the browser. So we have to keep that in mind when designing this uh, section. We need to have a background color for this section. So we need to get out of the wrapper division and then design this section. But all the content inside the section has the width of the wrapper division. So let's go to our uh, source code. And if we scroll all the way up, we can see that we have a division called wrapper. This determines the width of our website. So if we scroll down, all these sections are inside the wrapper division. Now here the wrapper division ends. So we have to create the testimonial section after the wrapper division ends. So let's create a section and we'll get a class name of testimonial section. Now all the content inside our section have the width of the wrapper. So let's add the wrapper division right here. And all the content will be inside this wrapper division. So the first thing we need to have is uh, this heading. So let's go ahead and type h2 and uh, we'll type testimonials and uh, then we have this testimonial. So we'll create a division called testimonials container for all these testimonials. So we have three testimonials. So let's go ahead and create a division called testimonials container and then we'll have one more division called testimonials for all the testimonials and in that we'll have the individual testimonials. So let's create a division with the class of testimonial. Now each of the content inside the testimonials is a slider. So we'll create a division with the class of slide container. And in that we'll have the content. So we'll have a division with the class of content. And uh, in that we'll have the paragraph. So let's copy this text and we'll paste it right here and uh, then we have the name and the company so let's copy this and uh, after the paragraph let's create a division with a class of name and in that we'll paste the name and the company name now let's go to our website and uh, see how it looks so here we have the heading and uh, then we have the content and we have the name and the company name but if you go to the design we can see that the name has a font weight of bold so we can do that in the HTML itself so let's go over here and add a tag called strong and we'll include the name inside the strong tag and now we can see that the name is bold and uh, the company name is normal and uh, then lastly we have the image so let's go outside the name division and outside this content division here we'll create the image tag so we'll type img and in the sources we'll type images slash testimonial one dot png so there's our first image all right that's it with the first testimonial now let's copy this testimonial division from here and uh, we'll paste it two more times all right now let's change the image and uh, the details so for the second one we'll have testimonial two dot png and for the third one, we'll have testimonial3.png. Now let's copy the names from uh, Figma. So this is the first one. Here we'll just paste the name and the company name. And for the name, we will have strong tag for making it bold. And uh, lastly, we have this name right here. So we'll just copy this and paste it over here.
Right, that's it with all the three testimonial slides. So let's go back to our web page. And here we can see all the content. Now next we need to have the next and the previous arrows. So for that let's go over here to our code and after the testimonials division we will have the two images for the left and the right arrows. So we'll create a span with a class of slider prev and in that we'll add the image. So images slash left arrow dot svg and we'll just copy this and paste it once more and uh, here we'll type right arrow. Alright that's it with the testimonial section so let's have a comment and uh, end of testimonial section. Now let's add some styling to our testimonial section. So let's go to style.css and I will create a comment. Now first of all we'll style the slide container division and we'll set the display to flex. So now we can see that the content is on the left and the image is on the right and we'll set justify content to space between so that both these elements are to the extreme left and to the extreme right and then we'll give a width of 800 pixels and we'll also center it so we'll type margin 0 auto now let's style the content inside slide container so we'll type slide container content and we'll set a padding of 8 pixels and 24 pixels now let's style the name and the company name. So if you go to the design we can see that we have a background color over here. It is the dark background color and uh, the text is in the light background color that we have set in our CSS variables. So let's go over to our style.css and uh, here we'll type testimonial dot name and we'll set a background color of var dark color and the color of the text to var light color and uh, then we'll set a padding of 8 pixels and 24 pixels so let's see how it looks right now now we have width of 100% because it is a division and it has a display of block so we need to change it to inline block so that it doesn't take the 100% width so we'll type display inline block and if you go to the design we can see that we also have a margin so we'll have a left margin of 16 pixels so here we'll type margin left 16 pixels now let's style the slider prev and slider next these uh, images right here now we'll set the position of those images uh, relative to the testimonials container division so first of all let's go ahead and type testimonials container and uh, we'll set the position to relative and now here we can go ahead and type slider prev and slider next I think we haven't changed the class to slider next in our HTML so let's go back right here we'll type slider next and uh, here we will type position absolute now we'll set a top position to some value so that it feels like it is in the center. So I have calculated this beforehand and uh, I found that 68 pixels was uh, almost the right amount. So here we can see the arrow. Now let's also give a box shadow and uh, let's go to our Figma design and uh, let's copy the box shadow from here. So just copy this box shadow and paste it over here and it's also round in shape so we have to set the border radius to 50% so we'll type border radius 50% now when we hover over this uh, we need to have the pointer icon so let's set the cursor to pointer now when we hover over this we have a different icon now both slider next and slider prev are in the same location now we need to change the slider next to the right so here we will type slider next and we'll set the right position to zero so now we can see the left and the right arrows all right that's it with the css now let's make this slider work so for that we'll be using a library called glider.js 
Now just search for GliderJS in Google and uh, you'll find this website. I'll also leave the link of this website in the description below. Now just go ahead and download the file. So we can see that we have a zip file downloaded. Now this is the zip file that we just downloaded. So let's go ahead and uh, extract it. And we need two files from this, the JavaScript and the CSS files. So we'll just copy these two files, glider means JS and glider means CSS. And uh, we'll paste it over here. And now we can just delete the zip file and this folder. These are just the two files we need. So let's go to our uh, VS code and uh, let's go to the HTML. Now, first of all, let's add the link of the CSS in the head section. So here we'll type link and uh, we'll just type glider main CSS. And then we'll add the JavaScript link. Now, just before the main.js, we will add the link of our uh, glider.js. So we'll type script src and uh, here we'll type glider dot min dot js now for glider min js to work we need to create a new glider object so let's go ahead and create a script tag and uh, we'll add some javascript over here so we'll type new glider and in parentheses you have to type the container of the sliders so if you scroll up we can see that testimonials is the container of our slides so we have to reference that over here. So we'll just type document dot query selector dot testimonials. Now for the next argument, we need to have a function and here you can have different options for your slider. You can reference the glider.js website for this if you want to have more options, but I'll just show you the necessary ones for our website. So the first one is slides to show. So this is how many slides we want to show at once. So we'll have just one slide at once. The next one is the class of the arrows. So we'll type arrows. And inside another object, we need to type the names of the arrows. So for prev, we have this class name called slider prev. So we need to add that over here. So we'll just type in quotes dot slider prev. And for next, we have slider next. So now let's go back to our uh, home page and uh, see whether it works. And we can see that the first slide is being shown. Let's click on the next arrow. And we can see the next slide and the next slide over here. And the previous arrow also works. So now we'll also add dots over here so that uh, the visitor can click on any of the dots and go to that slide. It is really easy to do this using glider.js. We just have to create a division and uh, reference that division over here in the glider object. So let's go over here after the span. We'll create a division and uh, we'll also give it a class of dots container. And uh, we'll set the role to tab list. And in this we'll create a division with the class of dots. Now we just need to tell the object that we have a division called dots over here. So we just type dots and for that we have a division called dots. So that's it for the navigation dots. Let's go back to our website and here we can see that the navigation dots are being displayed. Let me just add some content down here so that we can see the section correctly. All right, so here we have the navigation dots. We can click on any of these dots and go to that slide. So that's basically it with this video. I hope that you have found this useful and if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.